Hey everyone, welcome to the Thomas Blooms channel. Today we are going to be uh, planting our tomatoes. Yeah. So, if you're like me and you started indoors, uh, you started about six, eight weeks ago ideally, but you know, a month ago, that, that that's fine. Uh, you've hardened off your seedlings, you've taken them out for a while, getting them used to the sun, so that when you take them out soon to plant, they won't get uh, sunburnt. You know, and uh, you've done everything that you need to do, so now you're ready to go outdoors. So, uh, today is uh, May the 15th, and technically you're supposed to do it to May the 2-4, but I am doing it uh, a bit earlier. Uh, the reason being is because for summer crops, usually you want nighttime temperatures at about 10 degrees or higher. Um, it's not about the daytime, it's about nighttime temperatures, okay? And so I checked the forecast. And we're going to be averaging 10 degrees or more for the next, I don't know, week or so. So, I mean, not only is frost not an issue, in my opinion, which is, uh, you know, take it for what it's worth. But I also believe that even the summer crops are going to be good. The winter, spring, and fall crops you could have been planting already. Things like, you know, the garlic, the, the lettuces, the spinach, arugulas. You know, I've already gone over those. I even did celery. But today we're going to be talking about tomatoes. Now, there are two types of tomatoes you're growing. There's many different varieties of tomatoes, but there's two types of tomatoes. There are determinate and indeterminate. Now, all of these tomatoes right here, and there's about nine of them or so, they're all indeterminate, but I'm gonna talk about determinates first. So determinates are your bush variety, okay? They grow just like a bush. You would use a tomato cage, and basically what happens is they grow, depending on the variety, they grow anywhere from two to three feet. They are just like a bush and they produce tomatoes uh, up until um, a certain stage and then they stop, that's it, okay? You don't get any more tomatoes after that, you get whatever you get from the bush and then it just stops growing, okay? With indeterminate is it grows, and it grows, and it grows until your first frost date. So in the GTA, your, your first frost date is typically third week fourth week of october depending on you know the weather and how it goes um and it keeps producing tomatoes it keeps leafing and flowering until that time once the frost hits if it's um if it's a frost like under minus two you're done it's 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 done it's over okay if it could, if it's like zero minus one there's a chance that it could survive however your tomatoes uh, get really soft and they're not really good, okay? So um, I personally like indeterminate because I like producing lots and lots of tomatoes. We have a very uh, big family here. We like to eat our tomatoes. And so that's why I'm, I'm actually growing uh, nine tomatoes um, this season. And my nine tomatoes are broken up in three different varieties. So I have a beefsteak tomato. Beefsteak tomatoes are good for like, you know, burgers and Good with meats you know the, the the big juicy tomatoes okay my second tomato are San Marzano's San Marzano's are good for uh, pastas for Italian dishes to you know the sauces that kind of thing right you take the skin off and then you cook it and oh it's good the third variety I have uh, is like a, a cherry tomato uh, cherry tomato grape tomato the, the, little, the little guys like they're like this big they're great for um, cold pastas, salads, any, um, you know, you could use taco with it, although taco, any tomato goes with taco. But um, every every tomato I have has a specific purpose in terms of uh, what we're gonna use it for, okay? So uh, you might wanna try uh, experimenting with any of the three, but for now, what I'm gonna talk to you about is planting them and a little bit of tips and tricks along with that. So. What I recommend for you to do is when you're picking your tomatoes is know which tomato you're getting. If you are putting a tomato cage, oh, I don't have one to show you unfortunately, but a tomato cage goes up about, about three feet high. You know, it's, it's the ones that are cone and it comes out, starts like this and comes out like this and has the, the cage and the cage. They're about three feet high. There are some that are bigger, whatever. If you're getting an indeterminate tomato, that tomato cage is useless, flat out useless. Um, if you are very successful with your tomatoes, they can grow up to 10 feet tall, eight feet, nine feet, 10 feet, whatever. Your tomato cage is, it's useless. 
they're they're decent for a determinant, and even then, they're. Eh. I use my tomato cages for peppers, to be honest with you, um, and I don't get any bush style uh, tomatoes. But your indeterminates are fantastic because they will keep producing tomatoes for you all year long, and I do a little a few. Uh, I do some pruning for these tomatoes to make sure that. Uh, I emphasize growth because the more it grows upwards, the more it's going to leaf, the more it's going to flower, the more tomatoes you get. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this forward a little bit because I have to show you some up close tomato, uh, tomato stuff here. Um, so here we have a typical, oh, there we go. typical tomato. Okay. Now you might think, oh, this is a very leggy tomato because there's no stems on the, in the middle and it's. I prune the branches here, okay? The reason why is because, as I explained this, the growth hormone, okay, the growth hormone is going all the way up and it's focusing on growing upwards, okay? So when you cut the little branches here, you're forcing, well not forcing, but you're encouraging the tomato to grow upwards continuously. Okay, so when you, when you ask the tomato to grow upwards, let me just put this down right there, uh, you're focusing on the height so that obviously more flowering. And so I do cut, usually I, I keep cutting these branches until um, the first flower. Okay, and then I stop and then I, I let it develop. You, and then what I also do is I also cut the first, uh, I, I prune the first flower. Because usually when um, the first flower develops, it's going to want to um, focus on developing those tomatoes first. And if you understand the life cycle of a plant, the goal is grow, get bigger, flower, to sort of like, okay, this is my offspring, this is what I'm going, this is my life cycle, is to produce this flower, change it to a tomato, and then, okay, we're done. So when you cut that first flower, you're still encouraging the growth hormone to keep going up, 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 and you're telling it, okay, something's going on. I lost the first flower. I need to produce more flowers and more uh, branches and, and, and more height up. Okay, so that's basically what you're telling the tomato to do. And so that's what I do. It's up to you if you want to do this. You can just let the tomato go. However, I always encourage the bottom branches to be cut because what happens is as the, the leaves get bigger, and the branches get thicker, it sort of lean, it, it leans down and there's a chance it can hit the ground. And that's where you can get a lot of bacterial issues, a lot of fungus, and you don't want traveling back to the main uh, trunk to infect the entire tomato. So it, there's also maintenance with that too, okay? But we're gonna talk about planting right now. So I'm hoping, let me see if I can get a good example here. Just let me, give me a second here. Uh, what's a good one? Maybe this one. This is a big guy. This is, see, he's a, he's a big guy in this small little plant. But what I'm going to do is, um, now normally you plant and you see where the, the black part is, you know, the, the soil, you, you, you plant that in the ground here and you go. But there is a trick with tomatoes that you should be aware of. Hold on, let's see if I can say, do you guys see the fur? It looks like fur on the stem. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. But when you see a tomato, take a look at it. They look like they look like hairs. They look like, you know, arm hair, leg hair, whatever. When the when this this trunk right here gets planted in the ground, I mean I mean this part gets planted in the ground, those hairs actually turn into roots. Okay? So understand that. You can actually produce uh a bigger and more complicated root system if, for example, this much is buried in the ground. Now, I've done this before. I did it last year and I got tomatoes up to eight feet, nine feet, 10 feet, no problem. The trick is the more developed the root system of a plant is, the higher it will grow, the more prolific it will be, the stronger it will be, the healthier it will be. Trees have big roots. They produce big trees. It's just, that's just how nature works. A lot of plants you can't do this with, but tomatoes you can. And these little hairs on here turn into roots. And that is gonna be one of the advantages to planting tomatoes. 
And I'm talking specifically about indeterminate um, uh, tomatoes, okay? These indeterminates are, are great for that, all right? So what we're going to do is we're actually going to bury, uh, and now these tomatoes are different sizes, so we'll bury them at different lengths. So we're going to bury them and we're going to, you know, and uh, um, we're also going to fertilize them, which I'll explain to you in a second. And then we're going later on. We're going to add mulch, but it's pretty self. It's pretty the the planting part is pretty easy. Okay, it's just that I need you guys to understand that I'm not planting. Let me see if I can. I'm not planting this in the ground. I'm going to be planting like up to here. Okay, so it's just a little added trick for you guys when you're doing tomatoes. Now, one other thing about tomatoes, because uh, someone asked, because their to their tomatoes keep dying all the time, and uh, without getting in without getting into specifics, I can't tell you why your tomatoes are dying. But what happens is, is that you need about six to eight hours of direct sun for the tomatoes. Now, tomatoes are pretty easy to grow um, because of the fact they only need six to eight hours. All right, um, but they need direct sun. Now, if it's sunny out. And it happens to be lighter out that doesn't count we're talking about direct sun understand that so if they're in a shaded area it won't work okay they need six to eight hours of direct sun and also their tomatoes are tolerant up to about 95 degrees Fahrenheit which is if I could just check my thermometer here I'm really bad with conversion so I apologize um, we're talking about 35 degrees centigrade anything higher than that and you're basically cooking them okay so if best you can um, make sure it's cool now how do you do that watering in the morning uh, when you water in the morning, the heat of the day, the, the roots will soak up the water as like an air conditioning system. So if you water in the morning, you get them nice and cool and you can help them fend off the heat of July and August. Okay. Another way to do that is bury the remaining stem in, in, in mulch or sorry, the root system around your plant in mulch. Mulch is great as a temperature regulator. It, it, prevents the soil getting getting uh, superheated by the intense sun. It also protects the soil from nutrient depletion because the sun could bake nutrients off your soil. Okay. It also helps the roots because the less heat affecting the soil, the more cool you, your roots are going to be and the more it's going to be able to soak up the water to keep this part of it um, from being, uh, sorry, for being temperature regulated. Now, it's not perfect, but those two uh, key elements are, are going to be something you're going to employ to keep a healthy tomato. Watering in the morning and putting mulch all over it. And I'm not talking about like a little bit like, like this. We're talking about maybe like, you know, like a decent amount, a few inches, as much as you can if possible. But understand that, especially now with the pandemic, the lineups are in, insane in the, the big box stores and nurseries to get this stuff. So if you have it already, fantastic. If not, get what you can, that kind of thing, all right? So we're gonna take an editing pause so that I can orient the camera so I can show you uh, how I plant these tomatoes. One second, please. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but you see how deep this hole is? That's because we're gonna do the tomatoes deep. Now, this is gonna be adjusted based on the height of the actual tomatoes and how much I want to bury. But if you look and see how deep it is compared to the sides then you know it's going to be pretty significant okay and also you see I know you see like a lot of wood here like a lot of wood here scaffoldings because I created a um, I created a tomato trellis for lack of, of word for lack of a better word so I'm going to take you a little bit to show you here so you see this here let's see uh, there we go yeah yeah okay and here so I don't know if I the camera can show you but up here, there's holes where I'm going to hang rope to come down and support the tomatoes from growing up. Okay, simple as that. All right. Another thing I want to talk to you guys about is we're going to take this. We're going to whoops. This tomato here. Now, when you want to take a, a plant out, okay, never ever pull like this and up. Okay. You're adding stress to the, you're adding stress to the tomato. All right. 
uh, or any plant, and the tomato is already uh, stretched out enough. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to you could do a couple things. You could use scissors and cut down the side, and then rip it open and pull it out. I like to squeeze a little bit right here. Okay, squeeze it, get it a little bit loose, gently. Okay, not you're not like you're not the Hulk and just uh, but squeezing it, and then you can just whoop, and then you can just e see see I'm holding it like this, you just ease it out like that. Okay, now. Let me move back here. Okay, so you have a you have a plant like this, and you'll notice that there is a lot of um, roots along here. It's been in there for quite a while. Okay, and what you want to avoid is, especially at the at the bottom here, is what's called the root bound effect, where the roots are just spiraling in here. Because what happens is when you plant that in the ground, the roots won't expand out. It'll get stuck in its own little trap for lack of a better word and it will stay put and this is going to be the most you're going to get from your plant so one of the things that you want to do is you want to try and tease some of the root out so you see like see how i'm doing like this but very carefully because you don't want to damage them okay but you see how it's coming out but what i like to do though when i'm doing this and hopefully i can show you here is take a shower it and just, you know, loosen the soil. Okay, let it drain. And again, just work on, because when you loosen the soil, the, the roots loosen up too. And as you can see here, I don't know if you can see in the camera, but I gotta get a better camera. Um, the, soil, or the soil is loose, the, the roots are coming apart, and it's easier without tearing. And the more ends that you create that stick out, the better your soil is going to, or sorry, the better uh, the root system will develop and you won't get the root bound effect. See, oh, look at this guy, like hanging down like this. See here? Yeah, and just tease it out. Now you don't have to do this for every single, it's the ones that are seriously root bound. And the ones that are seriously root bound, you could tell at the bottom where there's nothing sticking out, there's no, you can't see the roots like able to either come down or come out to the come out to the side here but as you can see we have a few roots here and the best part with tomatoes is these are the foundational roots that you will use to keep it going and you'll have this stuff here developing roots too one other thing to be mindful of when you're planting is your tomatoes and any other plants that you plant into the ground are gonna go through transplant shock. Transplant shock, so just imagine, okay, you're living in an apartment, condo, townhouse, house, whatever it is, and someone comes up to you one morning while you're drinking coffee or tea or whatever and says, you're moving. Just like that, you're moving. Now, you're going to a better place. So if you're like, you know, if you're in a, if you're in an apartment, okay, well, congratulations, you now have a mansion. Your mansion is now, you know, in a, in a garden aspect, your soil, big garden, lots of roots to grow, that kind of thing. And you're like, hey, that's fantastic. But at the same time, it's stressful because it's like, okay, we're moving now. So that's what your plant is going for. It's going through the shock of, okay, you're moving now. All right. So one of the best things for me is uh, reducing that transplant shock. And how do, I, how do I reduce that transplant shock? I use this. Okay. So this is bone meal. Okay, so bone meal is amazing. It's uh, it's got it's it's uh, it's four ten. So uh, basically nitrogen four percent uh, uh, phosphate at ten. Okay, and what that does is is that the extra nitrogen, especially the nitrogen part, helps reduce that transplant shock. Okay, it is fantastic for roots. It, it, it promotes root growth. It promotes root root development and helps withstand the shock of all of a sudden finding a, a, a different place, a different home for it, okay? So I always like to sprinkle the, the, the ground, sorry, the soil that I'm gonna be putting in. I always like to sprinkle um, uh, the bone meal inside it or at the bottom and then put the tomato or any other plant on top of it. Um, I do something else with peppers, but that's a different thing and I'll talk about that in another video. But for tomatoes, bone meal all over the place. 
and and most other plants too because it's it for me it's not a secret but it's my secret weapon in terms of combating transplant shock transplant shock basically you're for two weeks it could be up to two weeks where your plants could have transplant shock where you get no growth eventually it will start growing but you want your plants growing right away. You want them adjusted. You want them growing and, and developing. You don't want a two week pause because anything can happen at that point if it's not growing. So uh, transplant shock, it varies. You can have zero transplant shock or two weeks or, any, or anything in between. And anything can happen in that, in, in that time frame. Okay, so just a little tip like that. So what I'm gonna do right now is we're gonna, I'm just gonna test to see um, whoop! Sorry about that. We're just going to we're just going to check to see uh, how far this goes, and do I want it at that height? What do you see? You see how far down it is, and see how much the so it's a very long stem. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're I'm going to be putting the bone meal in there. Okay, and then we're going to be filling the soil up. And if I don't like it, I could always, you know, dig it back, adjust, move from there, that kind of thing, right? So the my challenge right now is how am I gonna how am I gonna film this with the right angles so that you guys can see what I'm actually doing? But the best part is is that this isn't rocket science. This is not like and when I put in my bone meal, um, I eyeball it. Uh, so there's no, like, you have to put in exactly this much. I mean, the manufacturers always have a recommended thing and you should follow that until you get more familiar with it. So what we're going to do right now is actually, I'm going to switch camera things. So to give you guys a better understanding of what I'm doing. So one second. Okay. So, okay. So here we are. So as you can see here, we're going to be using this square and yes, I know there's a lot of wood with the scaffolding and all that. This here is going to be the support brace. Uh, for the tomato and um, normally uh, I will explain like how I brace it in another video but really what we're going to do right now is we're going to take the bone meal right here see this much and we're going to sprinkle it along here your camera may not pick it up but I'm doing it and because there's there's so much space here I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit over here a little bit over here and I'm going to put a little bit over here because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be bringing soil over. Okay. And I'll be putting a little bit of more bone meal on top to encourage the root growth from the actual tomato itself. Okay. So here we are. I'm going to reach over here. Grab this guy right here. As you can see, the roots are teased out a little bit. But you, it's been in there for quite a while. Just look at that. But look at all that root. That's some serious root growth. Fantastic. So I'm going to put it in here. Now, as you can tell, or hopefully you can tell, I'm going to do a nice close-up. See all this spotted stuff? So this is the bone meal on top, and you can see it's nowhere near the plant. So I put the bone meal on the plant, but what's going to happen is I'm going to spread more soil on here for the edges, and then I'm going to bring this soil over here. Now, let me just go find my trusty trowel. One second. Okay. Whoops. Let's move this over here. My trusty trowel. I've had this for quite a while here. Uh, just so you know, when you're gardening, you only really need like three uh, uh, pieces of equipment. You know, a good trowel, some shears, and a shovel. So as you can see, I've moved all the bone meal stuff here. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is... Just bring some of this other soil. Just move that tomato guy over here. Whoop, just toss that over there. And then we have the fun time of just moving this soil over. And then what you're supposed and then what you do after this is that once you fill it up, you give it a good watering. Okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plant them all and then water because I'm not gonna water individually, and then I'll add the mulch after that. Okay. Ooh, got some worms in there. So another secret to a good garden is worms. So I don't know, gardeners, if you ever heard of worm castings, some of the best fertilizer ever. And worm castings is a fun way to describe worm poo. Yep, worm poo. So if you have, if you have, sorry, this is my paintbrush here. 
I, no, this was out in the garden, this was on the side. So I use this paintbrush for pollinating. I'll explain that in another video, how to pollinate with paintbrushes. But uh, yeah, so there we go. Now I'm not going to, I'm not going to cover the entire thing right now because I have this square, this square, this squared, all bunch. But um, you can see how I'm, how much I'm burying, okay? And you can see here just how much, moving over here, just how much tomato there's left. And I'm going to be putting it to about, well, yeah, okay? So we're just going to be moving this tomato over here a little bit, yeah. And you can see here, that's already getting hit with soil, soil and the little hairs are actually collecting the dirt. So the hairs know that, you know, if, if they're covered in soil that they're to produce roots. So they naturally cling to soil, um, you know, to, to establish that root hold. Okay. That's what it's called a root hold. All right. So just bring me some more here, more here. Oh yeah. Look at that. So as you see, I'm just covering it. It's uh, pretty basic, you know, and I'll fill in the rest of it later, but that's pretty much it. So you can see like the amount of coverage on it, okay? So I'm just gonna leave it there and uh, I'm going to come back after I do all the tomatoes. So just give me one second. Hey everyone, so all the tomatoes are planted, okay? As you can tell by uh, them literally being in the ground and this one's hiding a little bit, but don't worry, we'll tie him up here so he'll get exposed to the sun. So what we're gonna do is just gonna do a little bit of uh, water around get it nice and soaking wet and notice that i'm i'm watering the actual ground you do not try and get any of the uh the stem or the leaves wet because that's what contributes to uh diseases and fungal and bacterial issues that kind of thing if the leaves get a little bit wet, it's fine. When you do this during the day or during in the morning, the heat and the sun will have it's a um, it will take care of the any wetness on the leaves. But that's basically it. Okay, so we just did the watering. Oh, gonna do a little bit here. There you go. All right. There you go. Just get a nice little soak. Let the, uh, let the water go all the way down to the first batch of roots that you planted way, way, way deep. And the moisture will filter down and help the root grow, uh, the root growth, sorry, uh, with the new ones, okay? And now I'm just gonna add some mulch and, you know, you take your bag of mulch right here, whoop. And it's pretty simple. You just grab some like this and put it around, okay? So I'm gonna do that. And once I do all the other stuff, I'll just come back, okay? Okay, so we've added the mulch now, so I'm just gonna give you a quick little view. Okay, so here we have the tomatoes. Okay, and they're doing okay. They're in shock right now, so a little leaf droop is expected, um, or nothing to be concerned about when uh, you're doing uh, transplants with tomatoes, they will, they will recover. Tomatoes are really resilient uh, when it comes to this. So as long as you give them uh, enough moisture and sun and everything else, they'll bounce back, okay? And um, the mulch, I've also wet the mulch. And as you can see here, it's a little darker. So you hear some dry pieces right here. And then this is a, it's a, it's a, darker, it's a darker color, okay? So yeah, darker color. And so the mulch is gonna be your secret ingredient throughout the summer. It's gonna keep your soil at a much cooler temperature than the outside air. And I've uh, done the, I've, oh, as you can see here, I've opened up the windows of the greenhouse, but we're at 30 degrees. Um, and that's with both windows open. So it helps keep it cool. It helps lock the moisture in. Uh, so you save water, okay? Well, you save on watering costs and you save on the amount of water needed to to uh, use on your tomatoes, okay? So your mulch is really good with that. And like I said, it helps with temperature regulation. So that's pretty much it when it comes to tomatoes, okay? Um, uh, in terms of planting them. Now, maintaining tomatoes, that's a, all, that's a different video altogether and I'll talk to you about that. Pruning 
and different uh, steps you could do for that to make sure that you have healthy and successful tomatoes. Okay, so I hope you like this and I hope it's informative for you. Um, please like, comment, subscribe, do whatever, um, just to, to keep this uh, channel going. And I appreciate all the feedback, all right? So this is Thomas Bloom signing off. Take care.